In today's video, I would like to introduce you to Immersal SDK, which enables you to build accurate and persistent multi-user AR experiences that can run in mobile devices, as well as AR glasses. This means we have options to build apps either with iOS, native, Swift and Objective-C, Android, X-Real Lite with Unity, Magic Leap 2 with Unity, or simply by using the REST API. Also, they have a variety of powerful tools, which I'd like to show you today, including the Immersal Mapper app, which allows you to create location-aware spatial environments from any mobile device. This app is really cool and it offers you a real-time capture and also a manual photo capture approach where basically you're taking pictures manually. There is also a dev portal, which is the central dev hub for all your generated maps. We can see jobs here for uploaded maps, download maps, view maps either with meshes or with feature points. You can also upload edited maps and also a lot more features. All right, enough theory. Let's go ahead and take a look at how Immersal works in action. I went ahead and scanned a park and this park has multiple statues. So I ended up using the mapper application provided by Immersal. And you can see that it allows you to scan in real time. It creates these feature points or point clouds. I also scanned uh, location two, which was the mid location that basically landed me to the third location, which is the statue that you see right here. And the end goal is so that I can put an overlay on each one of the statues and also a waypoint so that we can have some navigation. The next part is the Unity project. So I brought in the point clouds that were generated by our mapper scan. I'm also using ProBuilder, you can use Maya, Blender, and so on, to basically create a mesh of the path that I'm going to be walking through. So I'm gonna go from the first tattoo to the mid location, and then the third location is going to be basically that last blue tattoo that you look at. There's also some changes on elevation, so that's why you see here that I'm grabbing some of the vertices and basically moving them down. And basically the goal is to create a a mesh in the navigation system so that we can go through these different statues in real life and we can find them pretty easily. You can see that I have an overlay of each location, also multiple waypoints. So on this last waypoint, I also needed to bring the vertices up because there's a elevation change in that last location. So these are some things that you have to just play with and tweak until you get right. Now this part, it's gonna be pretty fun because I deploy it to my iOS device. So you can see here that the first waypoint, it allows me to basically navigate to it. I'm also gonna go to the midpoint location so that I can basically go to that third location where we have that blue statue. I also have an overlay here for the description. I just basically copy the play that is right in front of the statue and then put it right on a canvas. I'm also walking around because this is going to keep localizing as you guys can see on the top right. It's localizing based on the different scans that I did with the Mapper app. All right, so for this next demo, I went ahead and started opening the Mapper application and this is gonna allow me to do a real-time scan of my YouTube studio. I ended up doing this so that I can show you how we can place content in this area and we can have persistent content, which is one of the powerful features about Immersal. Basically, we can kill the app, restore the app, and it's going to be able to restore all the different objects that we're gonna be adding. So I'm also scanning the hallway and then this other location where I also use a lot. So this is going to generate a point cloud and I'm gonna be basically previewing it right now as you guys can see it on the app. And I can also go into AR mode, which is really cool because it allows me to test to make sure that localization is going to work. You can see that the points get all restored. All right guys, so the first thing that I wanna show you though, it's going to be immersal.com. This is gonna be where you're going to be checking the maps and then the status of everything. So if we go and select the server, you're gonna be able to, to log in. Once you create an account, then you're gonna be landing into this area. You can see here SDK download and documentation. There's also the developer token that we're gonna be using in Unity. You can also get access to the samples that they have available in GitHub for different platforms, including native, also for Unreal, for Magic Leap 2, and so on. Also, the jobs are going to be here as you, you know, as you get more maps and you build more areas, you're gonna be able to, you know, go to different pages, but you can show multiple entries here. 
You can look at the map IDs, which is going to be very important when we put those into Unity as we need to, as we integrate some of these different maps. You can see the status here as they get processed. So when you upload it, you're going to see processing. When it's completed, it'll change to done. Also, the name that we give it in the mobile application, how many images we actually took. In this case, this one I appended with MN, which means that it was a manual map that I actually generated. RT means that it was real time. So when we toggle between manual and real time, that's these maps were generated using those two different methods. And then all the different files that were generated based on that process. So if we go and look at this one that was manual, this is the one that I took where we took manual pictures, multiple of them, 153 of them. This is going to be the results of that, right? So if I were to select the eye icon, you can see here that now I can go in and look at the point cloud that got generated or the feature points that got generated based on that scan. I can see here that it's going to be, this is my office and you can see here, this is my monitor and then the other monitor that I have in portrait mode. And then I can also see here, there's a curve here, which is for the light that I have. So I know that this is the one that I took. You can also change the size here of the different feature points. You can look at all the, you know, all different areas of the map by using your mouse and left click and holding it. You can also change the color here if you wanted to change it. Maybe you wanted to have it red because that stands out, but basically it gives you the, you know, different visibility options to be able to look at the map that we generate it. If we look at the dense file, we have the triple here. We have some of the devices that I need to review. You can also see some of the VR devices, also my desk. So it just gives you an idea of the actual mesh that got generated based on that map. And this is a better quality one. I can even see the, you know, some of the icons in here, the Oculus icon on real. We have, you know, my actual ID here some of the books and then magically box the even myself recording on that on that triple. So this looks really, really good. The other thing that you can also do though, is you can also download these files. So if I wanted to click it, it's going to download. And the cool thing with this is really powerful because it's going to allow us to embed it into Unity. And if you want to have those maps be available offline, that's where embedding comes in handy because we can actually add it in Unity without actually having to have internet connectivity. We can basically embed it into our Unity scene, which I'm going to show you as well today. So other things in here, you can send maps, you can share maps. These are private right now, but if I wanted to make them public, you can do that. You can align maps, stitch maps, and also delete maps. Also, you can edit maps with a third party application, which I'm going to be linking in the description. So you can also do that as well. So in the case of the real time one, so if we go and look at the real time one, it's going to click on that one. This one has basically the two areas in my office. So I know that because this square right here, it's where I normally record. And then I have the hallway in this area. And then I can see the light from the other area that I normally record to as well. There's a couch in here. There is also a table in this area. All right, guys, so here's the fun part. We're going to be creating a brand new project. So just click on that in the Unity Hub. I'm going to be using Unity 2022.316 F1. And then I'm going to be using the 3D Core template. For the project name, we can say something like Immersal Demos. And then the location is going to put it under Code. And then the organization is going to do Dilmer. And then I'm not going to be creating and connecting to Unity Cloud, just click on Create. Okay, so we got the project created. Let me show you how easy Immersal has this. So we're going to go into the Package Manager. And then once you get the production version available, you're going to go into a package from Git URL. For now, because of the version that I have, I'm going to be using the tarball. That's where I put the SDK and then tarballs. And then there's also a version for the ML2, which is great for Magic Leap 2. But the one that we're going to be using right now, it's going to be the core, which is going to work with iOS and also Android. So it's going to go ahead and double click on that. Okay, it's going to tell you here that we need to restart the Unity editor because they're using the new version of the input system. So just go ahead and click on yes, and it's going to go ahead and restart. After that, we're going to be just downloading or importing the samples that they provide. All right, so it looks like everything is up and running now. So go back into the Immersal SDK here under the Package Manager. It should have this Package Manager window already open for you. 
And then we're going to click on samples and they provide a variety of examples that are going to be pretty helpful for you to get going. In fact, we're going to be building one that is going to allow us to add content. So just go ahead and click on import. All right, so we should be good to go. I'm just going to go ahead and close out of this. And then if you go under Immersal SDK 2.0, zero and then we can also go into scenes there's going to be a variety of examples that they provide as of today which is a content placement sample that's going to allow us to add content there's a map download sample it's going to show you how you can download maps by using unity of course to retrieve those and then also multi-map sample so it's going to give you basically an option to have multiple maps sdk to test and simple sample and you might see more once you get to download this for now, that's what's available as of today. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on the content placement sample. Make sure that you import the text mesh pro so that we can also have some of the text rendering correctly in unity. So we can now close out of this. So the next thing that I'm going to do though, go into file and then build settings. And I'm going to make sure that we have this scene as the one that we're going to be building. And then I'm just going to switch this to iOS. You can, I'm gonna show you after this, how you can also switch it to Android and what you need to do to do that. So for now, we can just do iOS and then just go ahead and click on switch platform. We go under Immersal SDK here on the toolbar, and then we can go open the project validation. This is gonna be, I feel like this is just too easy. They made it way too easy for us because it's gonna tell you everything that we need to do here to make this work with ARKit. Also, once we switch it to Android, it's gonna tell you exactly what we need to do. And in fact, the tool is gonna to tell you, it's gonna do what it's supposed to do to be able to run augmented reality, to be able to run this project without having to remember all the different settings that you need to set. So what I'm gonna do is, it's gonna tell you here what we need to do for iOS. So just go ahead and click on fix all. The only one that is not going to be able to apply automatically, it's going to be the actual XR plugin for ARKit, but it's actually pretty easy because they allow you to, they take you to the build settings and basically exactly the place where we need to make that change. So just go ahead and click on fix. And then what we can do here, they tell you exactly where to go. So just go ahead and enable Apple ARKit. Again, for Android, it's going to be exactly the same way. It's just going to be Google AR Core, but they're gonna take you exactly where you need to go. The next thing that I'm gonna show you is what you need to do to be able to communicate with Immersal. So we're gonna go into Immersal SDK and then open settings. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and basically put this right here next to my console. And then it's gonna require that you have an account on their, their portal. So just make sure that you create a free account. I'm going to have the link below in the description. So I'm gonna do Dilmer at learnxr.io and then the password is going to be the password that I use to basically set up my account. And then you can click on login and if everything works, you're gonna get a token in here. So that means that things are working correctly. I can communicate to Immersal and we can retrieve, we can make API calls, basically anything through the SDK is going to be authenticated correctly. So. The next thing that I want to show you though is how we can set this up, right? So right now you can see here that we have this icon, one, one is an X and then one is a plus with the little cube. This is going to allow you to basically add diamonds on the screen and basically in augmented reality. And you can add multiple of them and I'm going to show you in the demo here coming up. And then X is going to basically remove them all. The cool thing about this demo though is that everything is going to be persistent. We can add many diamonds kill the application, restore it, and then everything is going to be restored at the correct location based on the localizations that are currently, you know, happening automatically by using the SDK, which is really, really powerful. So a couple of things in here, just to know the Immersal SDK is going to be a prefab that you guys can drag and drop into your own scenes. This demo already has it and it has everything already set up, but drag and drop that into your scene and then that should allow you to start using the Immersal SDK. There's also in here an Immersal session. So it's going to co be controlling the entire session of the Immersal. Not to be confused to the session that AR Foundation provides. That's going to still be happening here on the AR session. You're also going to have an XR origin. This is all using AR Foundation behind the scenes and also the XR rig component. The AR space is the one that I want to focus more in this case. So this is where we're going to be having basically all your 3D objects, all your UI content. So anything that you want to 
basically render in augmented reality is going to be landing in the airspace because it's going to be relative to the maps that are getting localized. So if you go ahead and expand it, you're going to see here that we have an AR map and then it has an ID and also a name. This happened to be a map that was already part of this project. So in fact, if you click on it, there's going to be an AR map script also available, but this is a map that it's available in their, you know, in their example. So in, in our case, we need to bring in some of the maps that we already scanned. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on reconfigure map and we're going to be bringing in the map that we scan of my studio. You can drag and drop a map file, which is a bytes file that we can download from the portal if you wanted to. If you go in here, you can see that we have all these different IDs, right? That I show you and explain to you few minutes ago. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one that I did and have a lot of detail and it's going to be this one. So what you can do is you can basically paste that ID that I just copy and then it's going to tell you here though what things we want to do. So I want to be basically having that map file be available offline. So I'm going to go ahead and enable this feature. And I also want to have visualization of the different point clouds in Unity so that we can see that information when we deploy it to iOS or Android. So I'm just going to go ahead and enable that. And then I'm going to click on download and there's going to be a lot of things that it's doing behind the scenes. So it's really cool to see that they have that workflow available for us and we don't have to worry about implementing any of that. So as soon as I do that, you're going to see that we have all these different green dots in Unity rendering in the game view and also in the scene view, which is really cool. This is basically a point cloud of the office where I am right now. And it's basically getting rendered in Unity, which is really, really cool. So I'm going to make these, these icons a little bit smaller so I can see more of it. So a couple of things that you can do here. This is going to tell you localization meta. This can be, you can go back to the server and they can handle these. Basically, it's going to go back to the server to do localization. I haven't really played with that, so I'm not going to go through that. But just in this case, we want to localize on the device. I want to be able to embed this file into the device so that we don't go to the server and ask and say, oh, is this, you know, is this localized? Is this localized? Or, you know, can you localize this area? So in our case, we're going to be using embed and we're going to have this file in here, which all of this happening automatically for us. You can also see here the map ID, the map name. If we have, you know, privacy, meaning that this map is private or not. And then there's all the options in here that I will cover later on. But just know that this is going to allow us to now localize. Another thing that is really cool, though, if you expand this and double click on it, this is basically going to be the point cloud that we just brought in. But it also has this AR map visualization, which is really, really cool and really powerful. So what I'm going to do right now, this is set to be render mode editor only. That means that this is only going to be rendered here in the editor. It's not going to be rendered when we deploy. So I'm going to change that to be editor and runtime. That means that when I deploy it to my iOS device or Android, we're going to have basically that point cloud render, which is going to be cool for development. And then you can add an option in settings if you want to enable that or not, or you can basically not show it at all. But you can go in here also and change the point size, which is also really, really handy. I can also change the color here. If I wanted to make it white, I can make it white, black. I can change it to be, you know, maybe a color that stands out more like red. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit escape and then I'm just going to leave it by default to what they had. And maybe I'll just make it a smaller, something like that. I think works. Go into file and then build settings and make sure that you connect your iOS device via USB-C. In my case, I'm using an iPhone 15 Pro, so it has a USB-C connector. So if you have an older device, just make sure that you use the appropriate cable. And then the next thing that you got to do is just basically hit build. I'm going to be putting that in the desktop so we can just put it under uh, builds folder. And then we can just go ahead and choose that. All right, so this got deployed. The point cloud got all positioned correctly. I also am going to be putting a lot of different diamonds because I want to show you the persistent aspect of immersal and how it works as it relates to localization. I'm going to place as many as we can here and then stack these ones as well. Close the app, reopen the app, and I want to show you that it's going to start doing localization. And then the diamonds are all placed 
correctly, which is really, really cool and really powerful. You can see the ones that are inside of my office were also placed in their correct location. You can also see the ones down the hallway where occlusion is also getting applied, which is also really, really cool. So now I'm gonna go ahead and deploy these to Android. So all you have to do is switch to Android and then just on the project validator, just go ahead and fix all the changes. And then all you have to do is just basically add the Google AR Core plugin and then just deploy it to a Google Pixel or an Android device of your preference. Okay, so now we're going to be testing with my Google Pixel 4. It's not as fast as the iPhone 15 Pro, but everything worked correctly. I was able to localize and also place the diamonds just like we did before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close out of the app and then reopen it. And then I'm gonna show you how localization is going to start to happen. We got two areas localized and then three areas localized. All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions about Immersal, please let me know in the comments below. Also make sure to go to developers.immersal.com to set up a free account and enjoy using all the localization features that they support. Trust me, that is a really cool tool and I really recommend that. So again, if you have any more questions, let me know below. Thank you.